It is my great joy and privilege to bring to you quotes from Book of Resurrection, Norse, written by a great esoteric and poet, Miguel Chacuin Diego del Carmen Serrano, born in Santiago the 10th of September, 1917. The land of the Grail trembles. I tremble. No other light can compare with the light of the Grail. He who has foreseen it or dreamed it is lost to this world. Because the Grail is the driving force behind every enterprise. It is at the origin of the war we are fighting. Once we've stepped onto the road which leads to the city where the Grail is kept, it would be better never to have embarked on this enterprise than to abandon it. Even falling and getting up again, wounded, dying, we must go on until we find it. We must never turn back, because the Grail is the medicine, the food of eternal life. It is transfiguration. Without God, without all the gods who do not want us to succeed, with only our ancient Hyperborean fury and the memory of the beloved in our heart, we will achieve the grave. Speak to me of the Grail. It is guarded in a sanctuary somewhere in this area. It was brought here by those who were defeated in the Great War of the Worlds on the sinking of the Polar Island, where the animals and the fruits conversed with the humans, where my dog could answer me with words and I could understand. The apples of Avalon moved coming closer to our hearts. The grail is a jewel which fell from the crown of our guide. When it was broken in his battle in the heavens, he was struck by the sword of the enemy. It is said that possibly he himself carried it to the North Pole, descending like a bright light, like a fiery disk, there, he founded the capital of Hyperborea. Because of this, the Grail has been called the Stone of Exile. The armies that accompanied him are the defeated forces from a war between extraterrestrials, the outlaws, the exiles, who still preserve the peace of the broken crown of their guide in the form of a stone on which it's inscribed the law of the great secret. It is also an emerald chalice in which a liquor made from the blood of extraterrestrials is drunk. When Hyperborea and Atlantis were destroyed, the white gods had already emigrated to this other continent. The liquor is the blood of our guide. And because the Grail keeps one in a state of non-death, it is preserved in sleep. The Grail is the stone of light. It quenches our thirst. It multiplies our food. It feeds us internally, creating inside us the light that enables us to find the narrow passageway that leads us to the room where our beloved lies sleeping. When the twilight of the gods began to fall over the world and iron took the place of gold, Wotan, or Odin, whispered a great secret in the ear of Baldur as he lay dying on his pyre. 
The miraculous Hyperborean initiation comes from a great distance, from the original polar continent, where the female magicians, the priestesses of magic love, appeared. It is the woman who, in the legend of the Grail, healed the wounded warrior and the sick king. In the initiation of the warriors of Amor, the inspiration is not to achieve the androgynous, but the absolute man and the absolute woman. The woman dies, she is dead, she must die in order to return to life. She is the warrior's companion, existing only in his mind and his spirit. Only with the memory of his beloved in his heart can the initiate achieve the grail. In the warriors of the altar, immortality passes from the species to the individual, accompanied by an incurable sterility. Because he who continues to procreate children of perishable flesh cannot resurrect. We are the solar race, but from that sun which lies on the other side of all the suns, our star is close by and appears to be the walker of the dawn to show them the way beyond the sun of gold and the black sun to the mansions of the ray of green light from hence love and dreaming come to us. The memory of light shows us that the white gods are the fallen warriors who sought refuge in the star. The story goes that the white gods came down and lived in the North Pole on the continent of Hyperborea, which enjoyed a temperate climate during the Golden Age. When the continent disappeared, when the catastrophe in the skies was repeated, the white gods withdrew into the interior earth. Although a few of them went to a transoceanic continent to the west, where the sun of the golden age had not yet set. The ancient Celts and the Vikings knew that the white gods, their ancestors, came to this ancient transoceanic land, where the midnight sun rises and which is traversed by a river of liquid gold. They came to search for them and build their monoliths and towers here as signs for those who would follow them. But they didn't find the enchanted city. Again the Hyperborean woman spoke. I too searched for the path and the sign and the gateway. But I am a woman, and I know that I will not attain the city by my own efforts. Only in your mind, in your dreams, will I be able to do so. What a great risk I run, and what a great danger I face, if you don't imagine me. If you don't recreate me, dreaming it, all for both of us. If you don't love me for all eternity, if you don't bring me back to life, my warrior. I am a double-edged sword because I will put you to the tests that could make you lose the battle, although I need your victory so much because I am the her who one day emerged from him and once outside I rebelled and put everything at stake including my nothingness I am the her who longs to be in your her I am the face of your soul just as you are the face of mine Beloved, do not fall asleep watch with me through this long night we will be two sleepwalkers 
allowing ourselves to be guided by the legend of our white gods. They will show us the path and inspire us. Let us awaken tonight. We only have a limited amount of time in which to put the pieces broken back together again. And we will have lost our only chance of resurrection, of giving a face to our souls, of attaining a world beyond God, beyond all the gods, in a dream which not even the most impassioned walker of the dawn could dream, to break dawn the walls of the great circle and end the turning of the wheel. We have a limited number of opportunities to sound our notes in their purest form. We must do everything in our power to drink from the cup of immortality, discovering the stone of change. I am ready. I shall give you my death. I shall place my eternity in your hands and fulfill to the utmost the myth of immortality. You must also fulfill the myth of immortality and together we will have triumphed. And while the ultimate test of this initiation was taking place in the ancient night with a man and a woman lying naked side by side, separated by a sword, without taking possession of each other's physical body, she explained to him in her musical voice, full of longing for eternity, the light doesn't come from the east, light is only truly light in the depth of midnight, now is the depth of midnight. The followers of the morning star do not beg to be allowed into heaven. They demand to be because they feel that they have done everything possible to merit being defiled. We are living dangerously, my love. You bear the sign on your forehead. We belong to a different race. When we become conscious of all our bodies at once, crossing the most diverse vibrations of the ether, we will know how to love each other. And you shall be a warrior, Troubadour, Minna Songare. You will have sung our dreams of resurrection and eternal love for all eternity. Hail. O sun of gold that reflects the black sun, O black sun that hides the ray of green light, withdraw your luminous shadow, rend your veils so that I may see the hidden face, veiled by your disk, by the revolving of your swastika, because the one who is hidden there is I myself. There must be purity in the defeats which lead to victory. Don't allow your desires to reach the city to become excessive. You will find it when you have stopped searching for it, when you think you have lost it. You will have reached it without realizing it, carrying me in your most secret thoughts. Perhaps the gates of the city are the gates of death. Listen, my beloved. Never lose your self-control. Don't allow desperation to enter your search. If you fail at the gates of the city, when you have reached its walls, it will vanish in a fraction of a second, and it will be as if it had never existed, like a non-existent, flower shedding its petals and you yourself will become convinced that it was all an illusion. Then you shall be reminded to every sailor the gods have given a comrade. While one sleeps 
the other keeps watch on the bridge. When one doubts, the other gives him his faith. When one falls, the other discovers the oasis of ice for both of them. Everything repeats itself eternally. Time is infinite, but energy is not, and it has to reproduce its creations. The last becomes the first once again, and the serpent bites his own tail. And in this hallucinatory situation, it is impossible to free oneself from the ego and its recurrent experiences. When the energy in your body becomes exhausted, it will be reproduced not only once but ad infinitum throughout eternity when the will to power again crosses the same circuits of light. The earth is alive and it feels with you. It follows your footsteps, your search with equal anxiety because it will be transfigured in your triumph. The end of Kali Yuga and the entry into a new golden age depends on the results of your war. The earth by itself cannot finish the work that nature leaves incomplete. Today the earth has joined forces with man in his destructive passion. And the great catastrophe will occur in the first years of the age of Aquarius. But if you can find the entrance, the invisible devil of the earth fulfilling the mystery of loveless amour, the volcanoes will become calm and the earthquakes will cease and the catastrophes will be avoided. When you have triumphed and when you are a king, I will be your queen. For now, I shall only accompany you in your thoughts. I shall be your Valkyrie in the battle. O warrior of the race of the white gods, fight this battle to the end and lose it in the name of our gods and defeat Kali Yuga. Born of Hyperborea, she who keeps in contact with the star of the point of origin, who possesses the power of Vril, she is the priestess of magic love, who unites love and death and turns them into amor, without death, eternal life. She becomes interiorized in your thoughts. She will inspire you and you will never have another companion. She is your Valkyrie who will hand you the cup of immortality. The way without her is reduced to the imagination of a rational mind. Only if you are in love can you go beyond your conscious ego. Only with her can you attain the greater degree of consciousness, a state of super-consciousness, only through journeying together, dreaming together, because she is the superior form of energy which originates from the submerged continent of Hyperborea. She is a Hyperborean, and this is what she looks like. Her forehead was like the disk of the moon. Her eyes shone like the morning star with deep dewy light. Her golden lashes were like petals which had fallen from the sun in autumn. When they were closed, it seemed as if the wings of the birds had shut out the light of the day. Her neck was long like that of a statues in the temple. Her delicate arms, her slender legs were like the roads that lead us to and from the enchanted city. Her hands, with a tracery of delicate blue veins, gently steered the air 
as if weaving her dreams. Her golden hair floated in the breeze from the glaciers, becoming entangled in the branches of the Hyperborean oak trees. Her voice was like music flowing with the depth of the night. She is Hyperborean. She is light itself. She speaks to her warrior and say, I will constantly be at your side in the great war. And if you remain loyal to me till the end of time, if you believe in me steadfastly, bravery and good fortune will never forsake you. Only with you can I enter the city. In your mind, in your memory, of your heart. And when you have reached it, you will find me waiting there for you. To hand you the chalice filled to the brim with a liquor of immortality and eternal love. This is the mystery, my love. To the May Bride, I know that I will meet you again, and that everything will happen once again, exactly as it did so long ago, except that this time I will not allow you to die. I will hold you in my arms, defending you against the dark waters of death, because this time I will remember everything. I will remember that you have already died, but I will, I will remember.